this world that we're in now, this, this world for indigenous people, for those who have survived is a post-apocalyptic world. That this is the, the consequences of an apocalypse. And so the expectation that things are gonna get better doesn't exist because it already was better and that was destroyed and this is the post-apocalypse. So we need to re, re um, construct, rebuild, re-educate, teach indigenous languages again, reconnect with cultures and like try and start over. So I like that's, that's been on my mind a lot is like this for the indigenous people of North America from Mexico to Northern Canada is it a post-apocalyptic world. Like that's, that's the reality of what this is, no matter how uncomfortable it makes anybody else, that's what's happened. We're talking like mass genocide, huge disease, liquidation of food sources, you know, no more elk on the prairies, they're in the mountains, no more bison, the rivers are dead, no fish. Like we're talking like <laughs> it's freaking post-apocalyptic. And so in that creation of that world of that comes the death of identity and culture. And so you have millions and millions of people who have indigenous roots, indigenous heritage and indigenous culture who were raised to not be, or were raised to ignore it, or were raised to avoid it, or who accepted society's kind of progression that it was no longer valuable or important to be an indigenous person. And like, for me, it's complicated because, you know, one side of my family, um, there's a lot that's unknown and there's, there's uh, oral histories and stories that get passed down about what our heritage is. And then there's um, another side of my family that's, it's pretty clear, but there's no connection there. And that would be like my mom, like it's pretty clear where the heritage is and what the connection is, but there's no culture. There's no, um, there's nothing that's been continued. It's just kind of like a, a marker of like, oh yeah, this is where we came from and where our roots are and that's it. And now we're just Christians, American Christians. And so, I mean, that's so complicated and that's so many things. And, I, and for me personally, years and years ago, it came through having a conversation um, with this older Navajo guy um, where he was like, you know, it's, it's up to you to choose to reconnect with your indigenous roots and your past, regardless of what you've been told and regardless of like how people have wanted you to live. Um, and I was just like, that's really interesting. Cause like, we're at that point now where like societies have collapsed and everything's changed so much that it's left on us who have survived to choose to reconnect. Um, and I, I remember years and years ago going to my grandmother and my grandmother is like no, no culture in terms of indigenous culture, um, but very much insists um, that we have some. And, you know, you look at my great grandparents and you can see that on her side and where, where they are. Um, and I remember talking to her about it and she was like, no, it's, it's good. You, you need to pursue that because I never could. And I don't know anything. And I was like, that's really sad. Like it's sad that now in her old age, she's aware enough that she was raised with none of that, that it was hidden from her as her parents um, just kind of assimilated and did a normal life and just, you know, became Americans, you're normal Americans, that now like she can see there, there's value in it. And then to tell me to like, keep going with it. Um, so again, you know, there's a lot of contradictions. There's a lot of just different things 
there's a lot of fighting in my family about this too. There's a lot of hard feelings. There's a lot of weird, just weird things of like, oh yeah, well that's, that's the past, you know, that's, that's kind of your history, but you're not an indigenous person or that's your history. And we're not native, even though like, <laughs> what does that even mean? Like, we're not native. What are you, what are you talking about? Like, we're not native because you go to church and you, you work a normal job. Like, what are you, what are you talking about here? So there's a lot of complications, um, which is that divide and conquer aspect of imperialism and colonialism, right? Is you divide, you get people to not understand their roots and who they are and all of that. And then you've won. I mean, you've ruined basically your enemy, um, so in that and reconnecting, like I've chosen to be an advocate for indigenous rights and indigenous people, um, knowing that I was raised without um, cultural connections to a large degree. A lot of it's very subtle or small. Um, and just knowing that there's a lot of flack that's going to come from that in the indigenous community as well of those who... Um, were raised with a lot of rich culture, or raised with language, raised with like an, a clear distinction of their past and their history. But, you know, I mean, so anyway, for me, that's just, it's been like, I, I will advocate that. I'll fight for that. I'll fight for the awareness of basically this being occupied land in the United States, what U.S. history is as pertains to indigenous people.